Welcome everyone to my channel. Um, today we're going to open up a Naboo personal computer. Um, this is a, for those who don't, aren't familiar, this is a 8-bit uh, computer from the 1980s, early 80s. Um, from a com computer company in Ottawa, Canada. Um, based on a similar architecture to the MSX computer standard, um, similarities to a lot of other systems like the ColecoVision and the Sega Master System. Um, but it ran off of a cable network, so essentially an internet device, before about 10 years, 10, 12 years before the public, uh, before the internet itself became a commercial and public uh, to more than just schools and government and military. Um, so this thing is been making all the rage on the internet these days. It's uh, there. Let me open it up and we'll take a look. So these computers have been sitting in a warehouse for um, several decades, um, I think since the 90s. Uh, but like I said, the system itself only was online from about 1982 to 1986. And only in Ottawa, Canada, and Washington, D.C., and the States, and I believe in Japan somewhere, but I don't know any, I haven't found any information on that particular deployment. Um, so you had to buy it through your cable company and then your cable provider had a network, a, a sort of a menu of services or software that you could, uh, you could use, but it all, all this thing did when all this thing does when you turn it on without doing some special trickery, modern trickery, um, is turn up, test that the keyboards connected and then tries to connect over the internet or over the network to its uh, internet adapter. Actually, it tries to connect to the physical box, the internet adapter that was the modem essentially between this computer and the servers on the at the cable network. So let's open this up. But these computers have never been used, to my knowledge. They have been sitting in a warehouse for decades. Um, I'm not sure what happened to the to the machines that were actually sold to customers, but they've probably mostly been recycled. So this is the keyboard. It's a really nice, sturdy, weighty keyboard. Like this is these are Alps key switches, uh, uh, which have a really nice, satisfying click to them, um, similar to the uh, Apple Macintosh uh, original key use, uh, and I think also, well, I know some of my, some of the TRS 80s had ALP switches and a lot of the home computers have the really higher quality ones. So everything in this computer is high quality. It's got two um, controller ports on the back. Apparently some of the earlier models had four ports, but they cut it due to cost probably. Uh, and then there's this DIN connector that goes to the computer itself. A um, couple weird things about the keyboard. Uh, it's got a TV Nabu. Uh, it lets you switch between TV and Nabu. Uh, the arrow keys are a bit of a weird configuration. There's also a yes and no key, and then a rewind and fast forward. Um, SIM control. Oh, control. Or no, maybe it's just sticking. Oh, it is a locking key. Interesting. Caps lock is a locking key, but no, maybe it's just sticky. Interesting. I'll have to open this up at some point and see what's going on there. But either way, um, control key, shift key, tab key. Most of these keys are pretty common to most computers. Uh, go is a bit of an odd word, but it's a return key. It's got the same symbol. Uh, the SIM key is a unique one to this. Um, but yeah, and these fast forward keys are definitely yes and no. But anyway, interesting. Comes with a personal user's guide, which I'll have to flip through and then maybe I'll do a little video on that. 
afterwards. This is cabling. So this is the keyboard cable that connects the keyboard to the computer. Uh, it's extremely long because the intention was that you'd be sitting on your couch and the with the keyboard and your joysticks and the uh, machine would be sitting under your VCR or, well, under your cable modem essentially uh, by your TV. Quite handy. Uh, and then there's a coax cable, which would be what would connect this to your cable. And I think there's a pass-through, so it'll go through to your TV as well, which is what the TV Nabu button would do. All right, last bit here. I'm going to take this box out. Let me turn this thing around. I'm going to move a couple of these pieces of styrofoam. Styrofoam off. So this is the first time this computer's seen daylight since the 80s, probably, when it was manufactured. Actually, that's not true. Second time, I think. I believe the guy who's selling these tests them before he ships them. So, other than that. Okay, a couple interesting things. Yeah, so, everybody has this where there's this elastic that dried up and crustified on the cable, on the power cable. But... It doesn't seem to damage the cord at all, from what I can see. It just needs to be cleaned. So that's fine. I'll have to dust that up. Uh, nice little uh, note, uh, you know, sort of nice touch. The plastic covering this cable um, is a great long-term storage thing because styrofoam and the types of rubbers or, or plastics that are on these cables, if they stay in contact with each other for really for years, um, this will actually melt the cable. So having everything coated in a nice plastic uh, bagging is also really nice. They've been stored very well uh, through its time in storage. Anyway, nice toggle power switch nice reset button this is a metal case um, I know it comes off by four screws on the sides here um, that's the front of it which looks kind of got almost like a radio type motif but these are all LEDs that light up all right that's the first part of my Nabu personal computer experience just unboxing it and taking a look at it um, so things I'm going to do, I will take this, I will open this up and just sort of take a little tour on the inside. One of the things that I know before I turn this thing on is I want to make sure I have access to the power supply um, because there's one known defect uh, on the power supply fan um, where apparently they overpainted the parts and so that causes the fan to grind on the outside of the, of the, uh, the casing of the fan. Uh, so you just have to file off the fins if it's if that's what it does when you power it on. So if it powers on and the fan spins and it's not loud, I'm okay. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do some fan maintenance. Good news is it's an extremely high-quality fan, easy, relatively easy to get access to, although unmounting it from the case can be a bit of a pain from what I've seen. Um, so I'm hoping I don't have that issue, but if I do, that'll be something I'm going to have to address before I can really play with this. Um, joysticks, I'm going to 
bring a joystick up and connect it on here. I'll bring a TV and we'll connect it that way so we can see our monitor of some sort. Um, I'll power it on. Oh, the other thing I have to do is I have, um, oh, actually, I'll be right back. Right. Last thing I have to do um, is I have to make a connection between a laptop and the Naboo. So that's this connector, which will go into the back on the... It make, actually, that goes in the adapter, so that's where that goes. Yeah, it's a five pin DIN, which five pins, so this will go in the back of that. And then I've got to strip these cables, these wires, feed them into the appropriate uh, pins here that'll go to this connector, which plugs into this serial port that connects into this, which connects to a USB on a laptop that runs some server software. And what that will do then is boot, when this boots up, it will connect to my laptop and I can then go from there to choose what I want to do with it. And then I'll go through all the software options that are out there right now. Um, it's quite interesting. There's definitely a lot of you know, this thing's been in obscurity for decades and all of a sudden in the last few months, thanks to a couple of YouTubers, um, it's boom as far as popularity and uh, including one of the old original developers has been working in, with a couple of guys uh, online to build a cloud uh, CPM, uh, which is essentially a operating system from the 70s focused on the Zilog 80, which is what's in here. Um, again, I'll kind of go over that when I open up the case next time. Um, but yeah, so what I've got to do then is get that connected and get the laptop software loaded, fire it up, configure my serial connection to this, power this on, fix the fan if there's an issue with the fan, uh, and then test connecting to my laptop and then we can get exploring into the software for it. But uh, yeah, that's my introduction to the Naboo. Canadian uh, computer for the 1980s. All right, signing off for now. Talk to you next time.